Hi, this is Scott with 4D Tech. Today we are in a 2015 Ford Focus that came My Ford Touch equipped, and we are going to be installing the My Ford Touch to Sync 3 upgrade from 4D Tech. To do this upgrade, we need a few basic tools Phillips and Flathead screwdriver, T25 and T7 Torx. and some plastic dash removal tools. For your convenience, the dash removal tools are available on our website. Let's get started. To begin disassembly, we need to remove this silver dark gray piece of trim that goes around the bottom of the shifter bezel. We'll grab one of our dash removal tools to do that. We'll start around the edge here and work our way around. And you'll use a combination of the pry tool and pulling out with your fingers to release the trim. And this little side panel over here at the edge of the trim can just pop out a little bit and then the trim will pull away from it we can set this out of the way. Now we need to remove this cover panel that's below the radio bezel but above the heater controls. It's got the passenger airbag light in it. Same thing, we're going to want to take our dash removal tool and get it in that edge and begin to pop it out. And you may need to wiggle it pry it a little bit towards you to get it out of the opening. And once that's pulled out, we need to disconnect this connector for the passenger side airbag light. There's a little clip where my thumbnail is. Push that down and unplug it and we'll set this panel out of the way. Next, we'll take our T25 Torx driver, and there's a few Torx screws that we need to take out. We'll start with the one at the base of the shifter here. And there's two up here at the top edge of the heater control panel. And there's two more here that secure the upper bezel in that this heater control panel overlaps. We're going to go ahead and take those out since we already got the screwdriver in our hand. You can't see them from the camera angle, but they're right here where my two fingers are. With those screws out of the way, we're going to need to move the shifter back in order to get this panel out temporarily, so we'll set the parking brake. Turn the ignition on, move the shifter back, and pull up and out on the panel. Now once we do that, you can put your fingers underneath, and you see that I can push the trim panel for the shifter that holds the boot out with my fingers. It may take turning this a couple different ways to figure it out, but you need to turn the trim for the shifter in a way that it slides through the opening so that we can get this panel out. Just be careful not to scratch it up and to force it through. It will fall through if you get the angle right. We'll spin this panel around and we need to, you can do a couple things with this panel. You can hang it over the side here while you work. Just make sure that you protect your finishes, put down a cloth or whatever. I like to get panels completely out of my way so I don't have to worry about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. Um, there's a few connectors, so when you disconnect stuff in a vehicle, you, know, you always wanna take note so that you reconnect all those things that you took out earlier. This cigarette lighter jack here, push in with our thumb and unplug. 
that will allow us to turn the panel so you can see the rest. This is the USB cable. I'm going to take my flat blade screwdriver and put it underneath that edge to work that out. We're going to hold that with our finger, get on the other side of it, and you just basically need to work this connector out by pulling out on both tabs and pulling the connector out. Now we'll spin this panel around. It's going to be hard to see the connectors because the cabling is kind of short here. But these are the two heater control connectors that need to get unplugged. These tabs work a little bit differently than a lot of other connectors we deal with because the tab needs to be depressed as close to the panel as possible, all the way down at the bottom edge there. And they're kind of hard to unplug. But if we push down really hard, close to the bezel there, it'll unplug. And then same thing here. Get your finger as close to the back of the heater controls as possible. Push in and then unplug the connector. And now we can put this panel out of the way. Put our shifter back into park and shut our vehicle back off. Next we need to remove the dash bezel around the screen that houses the radio controls. Since we already removed the screws down here earlier holding it, what we need to do is put our fingers all the way underneath this black plastic edge here and pull forward. You gotta pull forward pretty hard to release the clips. Once the clips are released, we have a few connectors that need to get unplugged behind the hazard switch and behind the controls. There's a small connector behind the hazard switch. It's got a little clip at the driver's side that we just got to push with our finger now. And unplug. And then we'll spin this around and you can see that connector. It's got that little clip right there next to my thumbnail that was pointing towards the driver's side. Just push that clip and pull it out. This connector down here, we push the clip on the top and unplug that as well. Next, we need to take out the four screws holding the screen into the dash. Now we'll swing the screen out of the opening. This padding of the dash overlaps the screen a little bit. You gotta push up on it with your thumbs to get the top edge of the screen by and then pull the screen out. We'll turn it to pull out the connectors. There's the USB connector right here, has a clip on the top back, squeeze that and unplug it. The main connector here has a little lock here that you push in and then pull the gray lever towards you, and you pull the gray lever all the way towards you to release the connector out of the unit, and then unplug it. Now that we have the MyFord Touch APIM and screen out of the vehicle, we're gonna need the brackets off of the sides of it to put on our new Sync 3 screen in APIM from 4D Tech. The best place to do this is on a flat surface, putting the screens on the foam that came out of the box that we shipped the system to you in, um, you know, to protect the screens. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna set a cloth in this opening so that you can see what I'm doing. First, I need to get this bracket off of the screen. With the bracket off, we'll grab our SYNC 3 screen, make sure that it is facing the same way and that the brackets go on the correct sides of the screen. With the brackets transferred over, we're gonna temporarily set this screen out of the way. 
as we still need to install the SYNC 3 GPS antenna. We ship a GPS antenna with the system because even if you have navigation currently with your My Ford Touch, the antenna in the vehicle is not compatible with SYNC 3. So you need to use this antenna that comes with the kit. We also ship the antenna with the non-navigation version. The antenna is still required with the non-navigation version of the SYNC 3 because the GPS still sets the time, compass, and works for 911 assist. What we're gonna do is there's a variety of places you can place the antenna. It's just fine to put it up on the top of the dash, up near the windshield and tuck the wire all the way around. It will be visible, but it's not something that you notice all the time once it's there. You can hide it within the dash. There just can't be any, it can only be underneath the plastic of the dash. It can't be like under a metal plate or so. There can't be a sheet of metal between the antenna and the sky. So in this case, you can't see with the camera very well, but back in this opening right here, my hand in is, is flat plastic that is just below the top of the dash. We include, we include an, an adhesive pad to put on the antenna, which I have already installed. And we also include some alcohol wipes to clean the surfaces before you put the adhesive on. I've already installed the adhesive on the antenna. I have some alcohol on, on a rag here. I'm gonna reach back and clean the plastic that I'm gonna mount the antenna to. We'll give that just a moment to dry. And we're going to peel the other side of the double-sided adhesive off of the antenna. Reach back there. And stick it down firmly. And as long as you cleaned with the alcohol, it's going to stick down and stay just fine. We'll also tuck the wiring back out of the way as well. Bring this antenna wire around with the rest of the wires to connect to the screen. Now that we have the antenna installed, we can go ahead and put the new SYNC 3 screen in. It reconnects the same way as the other My Ford touch screen, only we'll be connecting the antenna also. So we'll take this main connector, make sure the gray lever is towards you and plug it in to the APIM. And push in until you start to see the gray lever move on its own. And then push the gray lever the rest of the way till it locks, so the connector's locked in. This is not fully seated into the unit, it will not work right. We'll take the black USB cable and plug it into the black connector on the back of the brain. The light gray connector on the APIM is unused. Now we'll take our antenna connector. It's got a little clip here. The antenna con connection is on the upper corner of the APIM right here. With the clip pointing down, we'll plug it in. You also want to make sure that this 90 degree is not sitting over the heat sink or else this will not plug in all the way. So you want to make sure that's swung out of the way and push it until it clips. Now we'll reinstall the screen and APIM into the dash. Since this padding was in the way up here, we'll have to kind of push up and get the brackets above the bottom edge there and push the screen into the opening until the screw holes line up. Next, we'll reinstall the four screws that we're holding the screen in. Next, we're gonna reinstall the radio bezel around the screen. 
We'll reconnect this connector we unplugged earlier. Also, there's this rectangle opening here. You wanna make sure that the connector for the passenger side airbag light drops through that opening when you put it back in. Then we have to reconnect the hazard switch, clip facing towards the driver's side. And we'll swing the top edge of the panel up in first. And then snap it all in. And now we need to replace the heater control dash and the trim that we took out earlier down here. First, we wanna get the shifter out of the way. So we'll turn the ignition on and bring the shifter back and grab our panel to go back in. To reconnect this, the, the blue connector goes on the left-hand side furthest in. The clips both face upward. Slide the connector in till it clips into place. And then same with the black connector. Clip up, slide in till it clicks into place. Now we'll replace the USB connector. We just simply slide that back into the opening where we unclipped it till it locks in place. And then the power outlet, slide that in, clip facing the hole right there, clip that in as well. Now we want to slide this back in and we'll want to pull this shifter trim back through carefully, not to scratch it up. And also, we'll want to make sure that we keep this connector for the passenger side airbag light in front of the panel and not get it stuck behind there. We'll push the panel in until it clips in and all the screw holes line up and then we'll replace all the screws we took out earlier. That'll be the three holding this panel and the two into the bottom of the radio bezel. With those screws back in, we'll clip the shifter trim back into place. We'll grab our outer trim and snap that back in as well. And just clip it back in the same way it came out. And then snap this little piece back into the side. Now, this piece of trim that went between the two bezels, we wanna make sure we plug the passenger side airbag light back in. Remember, reconnect any connectors you took out earlier. With the clip facing towards you, Click it in until it locks in and push this trim back in to snap it back in. And that's all. As part of the upgrade, we need to replace the My Ford Touch Sync 2 hub with the Sync 3 Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatible hub. The analog input and the SD card are not supported by Sync 3, plus you need the new hub in order to do Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So in or order to change out this hub, we need to get the old hub out of here. The best way to do that is to use a small flat bladed screwdriver and just get in between here underneath the edge of the hub and pry up. And that'll release the hub. We'll pull up on it. Now we're finding with this hub that the power connector wire is a little short. So since we can't get our fingers down there, we'll just take our flat blade, push on the little clip to release the connector and it'll unplug. Now you see the connector there. And then we got to unplug the USB cables by pushing in on these tabs right here where my thumb is. Now with the upgrade, we ship the appropriate hub for your vehicle. So since this has a single USB port here and a remote USB port up front in the vehicle, then we ship you the same style hub, single USB, and then it has the second USB output to loop up to the front, which is what the light gray cable is. Also, you'll see that the power connector that's in here is different 
than the power connector on the back of the hub. So we manufacture these adapters and include in the kit to make the kit truly plug and play. So this adapter plugs into this connector. And you wanna make sure it firmly clips in and then that plugs into the new hub. Then you just need to reconnect the USB cables. Now the USB cables are keyed on the side so they can only plug into the connectors one way. So don't worry about mixing them up. They will only plug into one of the ports each. With both of the USB connectors plugged back in, we'll just push the hub back into place till it locks. And now that we have the vehicle all together, we'll turn it on and fire up the new SYNC 3 system. It may take a few moments to load the first time you fire it up. And now you see we have SYNC 3 navigation icon the maps are loading, and because the SYNC 3 system is programmed with all the features that the My Ford Touch system had, we also have our climate controls on screen because those were on the My Ford Touch as well. Now you see how to upgrade the 2015 Ford Focus from My Ford Touch SYNC 2 to SYNC 3. I'm Scott with 4D Tech. Thank you for checking out our video.